Okay, this is our last new material for Organic 2. And you have, um, this is chapter 26, it's called Synthetic Polymers. And you can become just a polymer chemist. The, the field is huge, so we're just going to touch on kind of what a polymer is and some of the basic chemistry of the um, so a polymer, we've talked about biological polymers. A polymer is a large molecule and it is composed of many small repeating units. The first synthetic polymer was PVC. You've probably seen the PVC piping and that was synthesized in 1838 and then polystyrene came along in 1839. Now we have over 250 billion pounds are produced per year annually. Okay. That we have a plastics problem, people. Okay, and we like the convenience of plastic, but it creates a lot of problems because a lot of these are non-biodegradable. That means they're not going to um, break down into their monomers in our lifetime. Okay, and so that's a problem. Um, we're going to talk about the different types of chain growth. Okay, so you have addition polymers. And there's three kinds of intermediates here, and you'll have to be able to classify these. Okay, so you're going to have to see, is that a free radical? Is that a carbocation? Or is that a carboanion? Okay, so is it a carboanion, is it a carbocation, or is it a free radical? Um, examples of addition polymers are polypropylene, polystyrene, um, and different ones like that. Okay, so let's just look at a free radical reaction in which we synthesize by a free radical. Okay, so you know in free radical reactions you got to have an initiation step. So these initiation steps um, usually come around with an, with two oxygens. Okay, so something like this. And then you can either add heat, okay? And these oxygen oxygen bonds are um, labile, okay? They're not hard to dissociate. What kind of cleavage does this do? Homolytic. Remember this? So one electron goes with one oxygen, and the other will go with the other oxygen. Hmm. Oh, and then you lose CO2. Okay, so we're going to lose CO2 here, and we're going to generate this free radical. And the free radical, um, free radical, will add to a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so you've seen this before. So if we take something like this molecule okay this electron will add here I'm going to point it right on that carbon and then one of those electrons will go there the other one will go there so you end up getting propagation 
Remember propagation? And you have now added this here, and you have propagation. And so then this propagation step, this is propagation one, P1, propagation two, um, you can keep adding it to this styrene molecule. So this is styrene. So now you take this molecule that you just made, and you react it with another styrene molecule. So that electron will go here, there, and there. And you see why this is called addition. You just keep adding, and it's free radical addition. And this obviously is going to go to that carbon. And then we get another free radical here. OK, you can do more and more and more and more. And so then a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see it written like this, where it goes, where it's elongated. Um, You'll see it like this, where you have your um, monomer in brackets, and you'll just see N. And when you order these, you can actually order them with what the N is. So you can order it with 100 to 10,000, and that changes its molecular weight. So how do you do this in the lab? How do you control this? Well, you would get the initiation step going, and then you would add the amount of styrene that you would want. Okay, and then that's how you can control. Um, you can also get branching. Okay, so now let's look at an example of cationic polymerization. So we just looked at an example of free radical, cationic. So BF3 would be your initiator. You've got to have an initiation step. All these will have an initiation step. And this is your catalyst, and it reacts with water. B, uh, BF3 is a Lewis acid. It has an unhybridized P orbital, so that P orbital is above and below the plane. Those electrons from water will go and dump into that unhybridized p orbital, and it will form a covalent bond here with oxygen. That makes it negative. Okay, and then that can so once you get that then you can react it with what you care about your carbon units so this is isobutylene and so this is electron rich and it's going to go after a hydrogen there okay so it gets protonated so this is a way to protonate and you know that that hydrogen is going to go on that carbon to give you your more substituted carbocation. So it gives you your carbocation. This is cationic polymerization. And so now you have an initiated chain. And now it can um, propagate. And all of these will do propagation with another unit of isobutylene. Okay, so these electrons will go here and then you can draw this out here.
Here's the red one that first started. CH3, CH3. And now this is going to add to carbon with the hydrogens and the carbon with the CH3 then will become your cation or substituted cation. And then this keeps going and going. And so then you can see that your polymer would be this monomer. Okay. Um, final step would just be um, it's usually a concentration thing. You can you can just you could quench it with some kind of um, high hydrogen donor. Um, now let's look at an example of an anionic. Polymerization. Okay, so this one we have butyl lithium as our initiation, so we got to have an initiation step. And this is acrylonitrile of butyl lithium. Um, there's your plus, there's your minus, uh, you have a minus here, so this is going to back here, those electrons are going to go there, kind of like, um, you can think of this as kind of like a 1,4, because the nitrile, kind of like a carbonyl, so you can think of it as an alpha, beta, unsaturated, carbonyl type compound. Um, it's also considered a Michael um, acceptor because it does have this. Um, this is anionic, so we want a negative carbon. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. This butyl group is going to add to that carbon and then Now you have your monkey face there, right? You have your carbon anion. We've been talking about a lot of carbon anions. Okay, and that's pretty stable. And then it can react with another one of these nice little acryl nitrile molecules. And so that's going to go here, let's go there. And then you still have your initiated one with the butyl. And then you have CNH adds there, CHH, and there is your growing chain. Okay, um, so what does your monomer look like? CH, right, and there. Okay, so that would be that polymer. Um, stereochemistry of polymers, you can add um, stereo centers in there. You can do branching. Um, you typically, I have spent over a year working in um, polymers at Lexmark. Um, when I left Lilly, I wasn't ready to leave the lab and I was doing R&D. Um, it was really fascinating. We were making polymers. Um, what I spent most of my time was I would make a new polymer, a new or novel polymer, and then um, I would test different properties. So I would test the different physical properties of the polymer to see if it um, properties to see if it met our specifications. So I needed, um, I was trying to get like printer stuff. So in order to print ink, even here it's all, it's got to be within a certain electrical range. Okay, and I was making copies. So if you want to take a printer copy from like a paper you have and you want to put it into the copy machine, it's got to go through a polymer and it's got to come out on the other side, okay? 
and all that's done by um, transmitting different um, electrical ranges. So I would be in these, I'd actually make these things called a button, and, they, and I would have a little button, and um, I could test their electrical properties. I put them in humidity chambers and make sure that they didn't just go to mush, and sometimes they did. Um, so let's just talk about some synthetic polymers that we are probably aware of, like synthetic rubber. Rubber actually has a really interesting history because natural rubber is soft and sticky. It's obtained from a rubber tree. Um, and a lot of people didn't think anything of rubber, right? Because it just, it, when it gets hot, talking about humidity, it just, this is the structure of natural rubber. And when it gets hot, it just, it will turn to mush, okay? This is a cis, you see all those are cis, 1,4-polyisoprene. Um, but you know now that um, we can, our tires, Goodyear, right? Goodyear tires are made of rubber. Well, what happened was this guy that was working, he actually spilt some paint. So the rubber they're trying to do, he spilt a bucket of paint. Okay, so he spilt his bucket of paint, and the paint all went just over here, okay? And what happened was this paint had sulfur in it. So the paint had some sulfur compounds. And sulfur likes to do a cross-link. Okay, and this is called, and so now they actually do it, vulcanization. Okay, and so, and this can increase the hardness. Okay, hardness of the polymer. And so now what happens is when you add the sulfur, um, you'll have some of these and they will cross-link. So like this here can add the sulfur and so you get the sulfur and now that sulfur can cross-link with another one of the, the rubber isoprene. Maybe this one has a sulfur and then this can cross-link here. And depending on how many sulfur cross-links you get depends on the physical properties of the um, polymer. Um, you can just look through your slides. There's a saran wrap. So, you know, saran wrap. And um, there's also um, esters and amides, polyamides, polyester, polycarbonates, polyurethanes. I um, synthesized polyurethane, so that was my big one. You can see that nylon is a, um, an amide. So kind of look at that monomer. You want to look at the monomer and you want to decide what functional group that is. So nylon stockings, that is a monomer of an amide. Polyesters, what do you think a polyester would be? Polyester is a monomer of esters, yes. And you can do transesterification. Um, like I said, I did urethanes. Very dangerous for your nose to breathe in. Um, it just talks about thermal properties. Uh, like your ski boots have to withstand really cold, brittle temperatures. And so um, a lot of times you'll measure a um, thermal property using glass transition temperature, and that's Tg. Okay, so that's a property that's commonly measured. Um, and one other thing I want to say is um, a little story about the post-it. You all like the little post-it, those little post-its? Well, this guy, actually, he was a polymer. You should probably know his name. Um, he was working in the lab, and he made the adhesive. Okay, so the adhesives that they use on the post-it note. And um, it didn't meet the mark that he wanted to make 
for whatever spec he was going after. But he thought it was cute and he liked it and everything. But he was also a preacher and he would get up and he was a preacher and he preached, I guess, every Sunday. And he started using it as a bookmarker in his book and in his Bible. And that's what actually started post it. So that sometimes we create these um, polymers and they might not make the meet the specification that we're going after, but we can always come up with an application. So it makes kind of polymer chemistry interesting. Um, this for quiz 11 um, is going to be over your lipids and your polymers. So I don't have any other um, POGOL assignments for this. And then you have your intern exam tomorrow. So good luck. Polymer.